What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day, the postseason edition. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches from NLCS Game 5. I'm going to start and focus on Zach Wheeler's performance. He had 8 Ks in 7 innings, giving up 1 run on 6 hits. A true ace performance when they needed him to save the bullpen, because they used virtually everybody the game before. Wheeler was around the strike zone all night, and impressively had nearly a 70% strike rate for the game. He had 18 whiffs, picked up 6 on his 4-seamer, 4 out of 4 swings on his curveball, and 3 out of 4 swings on his slider. And he also had three whiffs on a sweeper. This whole game started with his fastball command. He threw 56% fastballs for the game. And those fastballs helped set up all of his other pitches. Here's an overlay of his four-seam fastball and a sinker. And next, here's an overlay of a painted fastball and a curveball. And you can see how his fastball command led to that curveball whiff. Because as a hitter, you have to respect that fastball. And because Wheeler did such a good job tunneling that curveball with the fastball... He gets the whiff. I mentioned Wheeler has both a slider and a sweeper. He throws that sweeper mostly to righties and that slider mostly to lefties. And I thought I'd show you the difference. Here's an overlay of a slider that had one inch of horizontal break and a sweeper that had 17 inches of break. Now they both end up in the same spot, but you can see how much more horizontal movement that sweeper has. If anything, the movement of the sweeper is a little bit slightly underrepresented. Because part of that movement is fighting the trajectory of the pitch, which is straight at the hitter. But anyway, this shows the difference in horizontal break between those pitches and why it was so important for Wheeler to add that sweeper to his mix this season. It gives him another tool to attack hitters. Wheeler now has a .73 whip over his last 10 postseason starts, which is the lowest whip of any pitcher over a 10-start stretch in postseason history. And what I love about Wheeler is how aggressive he's been. He has nearly a 74% first pitch strike percentage this postseason. Wheeler knew the D-backs were going to be aggressive this game, so he went right at them to get early outs to help keep his pitch count down. Here's Wheeler talking about uh, it. You know, they're aggressive, so I, I try to use that to my advantage um, after the first few innings to just get quick quick outs. And, um, you know, I know my pitch count was up a little bit early on, so I was just trying to limit that. Uh, the rest of the games, get quick outs and uh, make, you know, pitches where I needed to to be able to do that. Wheeler outdueled Zach Gallen, who went six innings, giving up four runs on six hits. One of the hits was this Schwarbunt that had a launch angle of negative 43 degrees, went a grand total of five feet with a 30 mile an hour exit velo. Although later in the game, we had a legit Schwar bomb, as well as one by Harper. I decided to compare Gallen's mechanics after giving up both these dongs, and you can see he repeats his mechanics really well. Grabbing his crotch area, in true, I just gave up a dick fashion. Gallon's only K this game came on a pretty questionable call. This paint dish fastball. And I've said before, you can tell how Gallon's start's going to go by how nasty his knuckle curve is. And this game, he only got one whiff on his knuckle curve the entire outing. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Slade Sacconi had this slider. Joe Mantiply had this curveball. Matt Strom had this sinker. Sir Anthony Dominguez had this nasty slider. My filthiest pitches from a reliever yesterday were either Miguel Castro's change-ups, and he picked up a sword on one, or this wicked slider from Jeff Hoffman. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. I thought this was cool. This kid made a Pitching Ninja pumpkin. What's up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Fromber Valdez for 5Ks or more, then take Nate Evaldi for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Marcus Simeon getting at least one hit. And then I'm going to add in my FanDuel Profit Boost, which gives you a profit boost of 30% for any Same Game Parlay or Same Game Parlay Plus of three legs or more. What would your picks of the day be?